keyboard maestro lets you set up sequences of actions for your Mac to do, rather than you doing them yourself. A couple of previous tips have showed you how to start working with keyboard maestro. Today I want to look at triggers and options within actions, as well as how to record a macro. I've got a demo group of macros here and I've got a macro called testers. I've set this testers macro up to display an alert it seems to have worked when I do an action. I'm going to click that macro and here's my alert. I'll just click the disclosure triangle there to close it up and put it away. Now how shall I trigger this alert? Well the first thing to do is to create a new trigger. I do that with the green arrow. And now I choose what type of trigger I want. You can see there's about a dozen possibilities. I don't cover all of them in this tip. A hotkey trigger brings up this extra part here where you have to choose what particular hotkey you will use. And so here I click on the arrow beside the word type and I can choose a specific hotkey. I'm going to choose the left arrow just for demonstration purposes. And now I need to choose what that left arrow key will do. At the moment this alert will appear when I press the left arrow. Alternatively I could have when the left arrow is held down or when I release the left arrow. I'm just going to leave it on pressed. And now I'll click edit and I'll press the left arrow on the keyboard. And here's the alert. It seems to have worked. Would you like to continue or stop now? It doesn't matter which button I choose in fact. I'll click stop. I'm going to come back and edit this macro. So that was a hotkey and there's quite a lot of different hotkeys that you can set. You can set up your own hotkey if the one you want isn't already listed. I'll remove that trigger. Click the green arrow and this time I'm going to choose a typed string trigger. I'm going to type the letters R T Y U and Keyboard Macro will delete them and then show the alert. So let's give it a try. I'll click Edit. I don't have any text editor selected or anything. I'm just going to click RTYU. And I don't know if you saw, but that alert did in fact appear. OK, that was typing something. I'll remove that one. Let's try another trigger. A time trigger is an interesting one. This will happen at a particular time each day. Now as I record this, it's 11.04 on a Tuesday. I'm going to deselect the days that aren't Tuesday and then I'm going to set the time to 11. I can use the arrows here and since I started speaking the time's rolled over, it's now 11.05. So I'll choose 11.06 and this time I'm just typing. And now I'll click Edit and in a moment or two, that trigger should go off. There's my alert, 11.06. I'll just stop again. So that was a time trigger. Let's edit that macro, remove the time trigger, and try for another one. Now we come to two that I find particularly interesting. One of them's the status menu trigger. Notice this macro is called testers. I'll just click edit to get out of that. The status menu is this one up here in the menu bar. I click on the icon and my testers one is up here. And here's my alert. I'll come back to Keyboard Maestro, remove that trigger and just try one last one. You can read about the other triggers on the Keyboard Maestro website. I also like the Macro Palette trigger. Now the Macro Palette trigger is a little tricky. If you don't actually use the macro palette trigger in anything, you won't see the macro palette trigger. And what's more, if none of your macros that use it are enabled, and then you won't see it either. I'm going to click edit to get out of there. My macro is called testers. The macro palette is this icon up here on screen. As I say, it will only show up if you're actually using it. And again, I've got quite a few macros here. I'll click on testers. And here's my alert. I'll dismiss the alert. Now that's some triggers. As I say, there are others. I just want to look at a couple of things to do with the actions now. I'm just going to remove that action. To add a new action, click the plus sign. 
and I'm going to come up, I'm going to find the one called Manipulate a Window. This one confused at least one MacTips reader. Remember, turn the disclosure triangle if you need to, and notice that this macro offers to resize the front window, but I can make it do various other things by choosing the options from the arrows here. So just be aware of the options in the actions. I'm going to remove the action and for one particular sequence of actions I might want to do something like move a window, click in certain places in that window, but I don't know where those coordinates are. If that happens I can always record a macro. I'm going to press record, notice here it says recording, and this little recording palette comes up as well. Now I can do various things. I'm going to, for example, go to Safari. I'm going to move the window. I'm going to call up a particular web page. Once that web page loads, I'm going to click on a particular headline, and so on. And when I'm finished, I click on the recording palette here, and then the macro is recorded. I'll just quit Safari to get it out of the way. And here now, you can see everything that I did. I clicked in various places, I selected Safari, activated Safari, moved the window to a particular position, and so on. You can use that to identify coordinates that you need to use in other actions. So that's a bit of an overview of Keyboard Maestro's triggers, actions, and recording. There'll be one more tip to come next week. I hope you're having fun with Keyboard Maestro. Remember the 20% discount. Visit the tip to find out more.